Okay, pet parents, you guys want to learn about heartworm disease, so let's get into it. Hit him with the new intro riff, Biscotti. So heartworms are exactly what they sound like. They're worms that live inside the heart. It sounds gross because it kind of is. And as you can imagine, if you got little worms swimming around inside your heart, that might could lead to a couple of issues down the line, which we will get into a little bit later in the video. But as a veterinarian, I would be remiss if I did not tell you about the life cycle of a heartworm because it's kind of important to us. And it all starts with a mosquito. Since the life cycle is a little bit long, I'm going to give you the short version, so pay attention. <sighs> First, a mosquito bites an animal that's infected with heartworms. It sucks up the L1 larva, and inside the mosquito, the L1 larva becomes the L2, then the L3. The mosquito then bites another pet and injects the L3 larva into the tissues where it becomes the L4. The L4 then gets into the bloodstream and goes to the heart where it becomes a sexually inactive L5. It then goes to the pulmonary arteries where it becomes a sexually active L5, and it produces lots of little baby L1 larvae that another mosquito bites the pet, sucks it up, and this cycle starts all over again. <sighs> Now, that entire cycle, on average, takes about six months, but it can take up to nine months for that entire cycle to be complete, which is why the American Heartworm Society recommends keeping pets on preventatives the entire year. There's four different classifications of heartworm disease. Class one, two, three, and four. Easy enough. The clinical signs that we see will differ depending on what classification of disease the pet actually has, with some of the more severe cases having something called cable syndrome, which means there's a big glob of heartworms inside of the heart that's preventing one of the valves from closing closing appropriately, and this leads to a whole lot of different issues. Testing for heartworms is actually really easy. It's a blood test. We treat the non-complicated cases of heartworm disease with a medication called melarsamine, which is one that actually kills off the worms. We'll also couple that with a steroid to help reduce the inflammation that happens once we start treating them, and then we'll also put them on a very specific antibiotic called doxycycline. Now I know what you're saying. You're saying, hold your damn horses there, Dr. Bozelka. If these things are parasites, why the hell are we treating pets with antibiotics? And that's a great question. And the reason for that is because heartworms will always come with a friend. And that friend is a very specific bacteria called Wolbachia. I'm not entirely sure of the symbiotic relationship between the heartworms and the Wolbachia because it's pretty complicated. But we do know they need each other to survive. And if we kill off the heartworms without taking care of the bacteria, the bacteria that are left when the heartworms die can lead to massive amounts of inflammation. Which, when we're talking about the lungs, severe amounts of inflammation can be pretty fatal. So we want to avoid that. Even though we do everything we can to reduce inflammation when we are treating a pet for heartworms, they can still have complications, which is why it's so important to keep them on preventative medications. And for pets that have cable syndrome, we can't just give them the medications to treat. We have to be much more aggressive and put them under anesthesia and physically go in and pluck the heartworms out of the pet. And it's one of the coolest things I have ever done. 